Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Praise God. Now, yesterday, we began a new series that I titled Life Lessons from the Bible. And I know you're going to learn a lot. I know it's going to be a great, great blessing to you. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you, Lord. Thank you, because today our daily bread is released to us. And we receive freely and abundant grace from you to understand your truth. I declare even right now, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed. Lives are being transformed even now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now yesterday, I was sharing with you the difference between the Word of God and the Bible because we need to understand these things if we don't understand them you are going to like i told you yesterday if you don't understand what the bible is you won't have a good relationship with the bible praise god say no i don't need a relationship with the bible i need a relationship with god no you see yes I, by the time we're done today you will understand why it's important to have a good relationship with your bible praise god so so i told you yesterday what the word of god is and i said the word of god is god's communication to you by the holy spirit so what is the bible then good the bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of god what they did with it and how they ended with it. Did you get that? I'll repeat that again in case you're writing down. The Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God. Did you get that? What they did with it and how they ended with it. See. So now why, why did I say is a testimony? Is a compendium of testimonies. See. Now, anyone who doesn't receive the word of God doesn't have a testimony. Everyone who receives the word of God is testifying. See, So what is the Bible doing? The Bible is testifying that the word of God is truth. From Genesis to Revelation, it's a testimony. Several testimonies. As I said, it's a compendium of testimonies. So several testimonies. Moses spoke. Elijah spoke. Jeremiah spoke, Peter spoke, James spoke, John spoke, Matthew spoke, um, Ezekiel, every one of them. And every story you see in the Bible, you, that's why you see where prophecy is given from the Lord. And then you see how they received it and how it brought them victory. It, it's all saying one thing. And what's it saying? I'll tell you what it's saying. It's saying Jesus is Lord, praise God. Now, now Moses, from Genesis to Revelation, everything it is saying is this truth. Jesus is Lord. Now, why is it important to know this? And why is it important to, to have a good relationship with your Bible? Every story you read in the Bible, every one of it, shows something. It shows the presence of God in our lives. It shows the power of God in our lives. So when you read these testimonies, it tells you one thing. If, if Abraham's life can be good at the end like this, then if I receive the word of God just like Abraham did, then my life will be better. So, let me show you a scripture. Romans chapter 15 Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. He said, For whatsoever things were written a fourth time, not as what was written before, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. See? So everything written in the Bible is written for us to learn. So that's what I told you yesterday. Be careful how you equate, you know, just, just say, this is the word of God. And then anything you open is the word of God. No, it's not. But every story you read in the Bible is written for your learning. Now, what are you to learn from it? It says, so that you or we 
True patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. What, is, what does it mean comfort of the scriptures? When we hold on to these truths, because the things that are written here, they are truths. Everything written in the Bible is, is true. Every story written here is true. Nobody formed it up. Nobody. These things happened. That's what I mean by that. They happened. Now, if they happened, then you should pay attention to them. This is not a storybook that someone sat down and give bedtime stories and, and, or, 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 or riddles or rhymes or, or uh, what do you call it, folk tales. No, sir. These are true events that happened. Praise God. So they were documented. And it's all saying one thing. When you connect with God, your life will surely change. Praise God. So, we are going to be taking stories from the Bible. Like I said, it's a compendium of testimonies. So, we are going to be looking at several testimonies. See? So, we look at a story and then we will pull out the testimonies that we'll get from there. Praise God. Because I want you to understand something. When you walk with the Lord, what pays the most is that you understand him. If you don't understand it, now you remember Jeremiah said this actually. He says, let him that glory, glory in this. In what? That he knows and understands me. God speaking through Jeremiah. He knows and understands me. Now sometimes people don't understand. You know, even when we talk about... Um, the Word of God. Now, when we talk about the Word of God, I've heard teachings, I've heard pastors teach this. And I thought to, so also until the Spirit of God brought me to proper understanding. You know, we used to think, when we say Logos, Logos is the written word. Then we say Rema, Rema is the spoken word. But the Lord spoke to me and said, no, you're getting it wrong. The Word of God is spoken. Whether Logos or written, if it's not the word of God, it's not the word of God. So the, the Bible is not Logos. It contains Logos, but it's not Logos. So you don't say the written word is Logos. No, 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 no. And then the Spirit of God told me, this. says, Logos is the word of God that tells you about the personality and character of God. That's what Logos is. Did you get that? I say it again. Logos is the word of God that tells you about the character and the personality of God. See? So what is Rema then? Okay. Rema is the word of God that comes to you and tells you what to do in a particular situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Praise God. Should I repeat that? Rema is the word of God that comes to you and it comes with wisdom telling you in a particular situation what you ought to do. So most times it is Rema that brings about the miracle. Logos brings you understanding. So, so Logos will help you know this is where I stand and this is what I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to. Yes. Rema is what now tells you get up, go to that place. And as you get up and go, you see a miracle. So that's the difference. Praise <laughs> God. So, so you need to understand when Rema is coming to you. And you need to understand when Logos is coming to you. For example, you're praying and say, God, I need your help. Oh, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. Lord, Lord this situation, you need to help me. And, and suddenly the word of God begins to come to you. And you begin to hear things like, don't you know who I am? I am the one who delivered the children of Israel from Egypt by a mighty hand. I am the one who set free, you know, the prisoners when they were locked up. I am the one who, who saved Daniel from the lion's den. I am the one who, who delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You can be praying and you'll begin to hear those words. Now, what are you hearing? You are hearing logos. You can hear all those things and still be in that same situation. You understand what I'm saying? You are still there. I mean, things will not change. You are excited now, but that's not enough. Now, what, why would God send Logos your way first of all? It is to give your faith something to stand on. 
you get what I'm saying? So, so you you are praying for you know something. You're praying, and then you hear the Lord say, "Go, go read about Daniel, or go read about or about Moses, or go read." And then you take it up, and you're reading it, and then you're like, "Whoa!" I mean, I, I, you, your your faith begins to be stirred up. Your faith begins to be stirred up. Now that's what Logos does to you. It shows you the personality, the character, the ability of God, but it doesn't mean it to bring the mirror. So when you now know the character of God, what, 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 is it, what, what do you do with it? It helps you to take a proper disposition concerning that issue you're dealing with. Now that's what the word of God is. That's what the Bible is. That's what going to church is. When you go to church, what do you go to do in church? You see, you, you need to understand this. Thing. You don't just go to church because it's on Sunday. You wear your best clothes. You know, ah, that cloth I didn't wear for that wedding. I will wear it for church today. Hey, they will know that I've come. No, come on now. <laughs> Neither do you just go to church and just feel, hmm, at least I went to church today. I must have been blessed. You go to church to hear the testimony of God. Praise God. You want to go hear the latest testimony. What do I mean? I'm not talking about when people just stand up. You know, I have always said this. See, most times what we do in church, you know, it's a testimony time. So what we do in church, it's not really testimony. So brethren, hmm, for the past 10 years, I have been working. I didn't even, I couldn't pay my house rent. I couldn't buy a car. But praise God, I came to church last week Sunday and pastor said this week a miracle will happen and guess what I went to work on Monday my boss told me that they've given me a new position and now that's wonderful that's wonderful but it's a testimony when you talk about testimony of God's truth it goes beyond that if you want to give testimony in church no, someone holding the mic for you will not do it. <laughs> you will need to write a book. Praise God. Now, that's why they wrote this book. They believe. Now, that's why this is very important. Jeremiah believed enough that he was hearing God and he began to write it. Oh, I remember one day I was praying and then the Lord spoke to me. He says, take your diary and begin to read. I said, okay, yes, Lord. So I picked up my diary. And I began, to, I began to read and see the things that the Lord have taught me over the years. I was just going to say, oh, wow, yeah, I remember when this truth came to me. And then I heard the voice of God speak to me. And he said, son, do you know this, your diary, for you is even more powerful than the Bible? I said, whoa, how? He said, yes. Because this is now your own word that came to you. It is sure to you like nothing else. If men have put together this whole Bible to deceive people, this your diary, you can use it to deceive yourself. So if you believe that the word of God came, to, I'm telling you what the Holy Spirit was telling me. If you believe that the word of God came to you when you wrote down these things, then now you believe that the word of God came to Elijah. You believe the word of God came to Jeremiah. You believe the word of God. Do you understand what? Ah, I was so blessed. I, I said, whoa. whoa. That's why it's important you write down the things that God is saying to you. Guess what? They are scriptures. You need this foundation for what we're going to be dealing with. They are scriptures. You write them down. You go back to the. Do you know you can quote your diary and say, Satan, listen, it is written. <laughs> yeah, oh, you know, you, you just think, We have a father in the name of Jesus. It is written in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. That, you know, you have just quoted in, in Psalms chapter this. Oh, God. You, do you know you can quote your diary also? <laughs> You're looking at me and I say, What are you saying? Oh, yes. Hey, Lord, you can take it to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to bring something to your remembrance. It is written on the 4th of January, 2014, by 9 a.m., your word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me saying that I will help you and you will not be ashamed. <laughs> you, yeah, yes, I remember. Oh, Lord, thank you for, for I received this word and it's working. You see this shame that is about to come? It stops right here. <laughs> it's good. And let me tell you the truth, it is more powerful 
than what Jeremiah said. I mean, when you are concerned. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, our spirits are energized. And we are seeing clearly what you're saying to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. My time is up. So I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.